Are you dreaming of coastal living with a touch of small town charm? At Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Treasure, your dreams are transformed into reality. From residential and commercial real estate to long-term rentals, their expertise covers it all. They now have three locations to serve you in Sneeds Ferry, Surf City, and their newest location in Wilmington. Whether you're relocating, retiring, upsizing, or downsizing, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Treasure is dedicated to supporting your buying and selling needs. Visit treasurerealty.com today or call 910-327-4444. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Treasure, your trusted local experts. Welcome to Topsail Insider, where you can hear all about the businesses and events in the beautiful coastal towns in the greater Topsail area of North Carolina. Coming up, have you heard of disruptive education? I hadn't until just recently. Today, Nick Barr and his wife, Jessica, will be joining us to discuss Acton Academy Topsail. That's A-C-T-O-N, Acton Academy Topsail, a brand new school completely different from the public, private, and charter schools we're all used to. I'm going to do something a little different today and recommend you pause this episode and click the top link in my show notes. It will take you to a 15-minute Acton Academy documentary on YouTube. Check it out, then resume listening here. It will provide a solid foundation for today's discussion. Today, Nick and Jessica will share insights about Acton's learner-driven community, the hero's journey, Socratic guides instead of traditional teachers, and how kids collaborate on real-world projects with self-management and self-governance. This new school opens this fall. Stay tuned, everyone. We have a lot to cover today on Topsail Insider. It's time to indulge and experience the finest coastal hospitality on Topsail Island with Saltwater Resort and Suites in Surf City, North Carolina. Designed to exceed your expectations, guests can enjoy elegant suites featuring premium, luxurious bedding, fully equipped kitchens with dishwashers, 75-inch flat screens, ensuite washers and dryers, and gorgeous ocean views. With the grand opening of their newest location, you can now relax in their saltwater pool and modern clubhouse, perfect for unwinding, socializing, and private events. Book your next beach getaway today at saltwatertopsold.com or call 910-886-4818. Saltwater Resort and Suites, redefining luxury on Topsail Island. Come on out to Surf City Line for the best made-from-scratch beach and bowls on Topsail Island. Treat yourself to their delicious bowls with shrimp, steak, fish, chicken, or pork. Or enjoy their peel-and-eat shrimp, beach break salads, and more. They offer a full bar serving handcrafted cocktails, incredible margaritas, and they proudly serve North Carolina craft beer. The line boasts the biggest deck on the island with three levels for listening to live music, relaxing in the sun, or head on up to the top deck to enjoy your meal with ocean views. Visit SurfCityLineNC.com for their full menus. The best service and beach vibes on the island await you at 2112 North New River Drive. Whether you're a local or visiting from out of town, celebrating a special occasion, or just soaking up the sun with family and friends, it's always a great time at Surf City Line. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Topsail Insider. My name is Krista, and I am your host. Today, we are talking to Nick and Jessica Barr. That's B-A-H-R, Barr. They are the co-founders of an affiliate Acton Academy, Acton Academy Topsail. Welcome, Nick and Jessica. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. I did talk to some mothers before bringing you guys in here, and there was some excitement about having another option yeah. here for us in Hampstead. And we do have one charter school, mm -hmm. but only one. And one of the moms was saying where she came from, which was Charlotte, she goes, there were charter schools everywhere. We had plenty to choose from. So we are limited. We are a bunch of transplants here. And a lot of us, including myself, moved here specifically because the Topsail School District was so great. I just want to start out by saying 
saying that this episode isn't about whether or not the top school schools are good. They are good. This is about exploring a disruption to the way kids have been taught for over a century, which is the standardized curriculum and the standardized testing, the one size fits all in this age group teaching. So yeah. this is a disruption. It has some Montessori touches to it. I think I don't have experience with Montessori. So you guys will have to tell me the similarities yeah. as we go through this. I am going to give you some time here to explain this, the, the concept of the Acton Academy. I'm just going to let you go with it and tell us how it's so different from traditional schools. Great. Oh, thank you. And thank you again for having us. We agree with you. First of all, people care about education and there's a lot of individuals doing their very best, putting their best efforts to work. And like you, we're not here to say that anybody's doing a bad job, but we are glad to be able to offer an alternative, something a little different. And so that's what we found with Acton Academy. And I guess to set this up for us and for the original founders of Acton Academy, good decision making for our children is crucial. We want them to be able to make good decisions. So it is different than traditional schools. We use, we we call them guides rather than teachers, which is, I think, a term borrowed from Maria Montessori. And Socratic discussions are a big part of what we're doing. And that's where that kind of decision making process comes in. It's a very much learner driven environment. I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit more too. Oh, we will. This was a whole new language for me, actually. Yeah, yeah, for (laughs) us too. But it just with like sparks of delight and joy, almost common sense to me as well, as I've learned about it. It it Mm -hmm. just, it makes a lot of sense to me. So our young learners will have running partners and their peers will help critique their work and they'll hold each other accountable. So Um, a running partner is someone in their age group, uh their age range. Yeah. Yep. So a running partner will, will be somebody that they can look to first to say, Hey, can you look over this? Or did I do well enough here? And that kind of thing. I guess I should say first, every individual that walks through our doors at Acton Academy, we believe is a genius. It, It sounds cliche, but it's true. It's just, it's not just a sweet little phrase. It's something we actually believe and that each of those geniuses deserves to find a calling to be able to change the world in a profound way. And for that, we, use the hero's journey as a method or analogy for what we're doing. So our hope is that people that walk through our doors will be able to find their calling, find that that thing that really makes them tick find a passion. And I'm struggling with that with my own kids. When they come in, are you looking and trying to recognize what their passion might be? Are you truly just giving it to them and letting them explore and figure that out themselves? Good question. The great thing about Acton is they will be introduced to lots of different interests and activities and projects. And hopefully along the way they will find that passion Mm -hmm. because they will have plenty of opportunities to explore lots of different avenues. I was wondering about the different things that they might be exposed to because right now it's math, science, social studies, reading, and and those we have to have. I get that. Mm -hmm. Core skills, yes. Yeah, where, what else are you providing them that would lead them to that passion? I did see in the video there was gardening, for instance, horticulture. Uh, What else are you having at your school to give them something outside of the basics? Yeah, so I guess a typical day would start with a launch, and we can talk about that, but to answer your question, we'll start with a launch, and then generally speaking, the first half of the day is dedicated to course skills, which our heroes or young learners will go and essentially on their own and with... Is it electronic device? Devices. devices. Maybe it's Khan Academy <clears throat> for math or Lexia. Yeah, mastery-based software that there they will be using. And the great thing about that is they master it and then they move on. So really they can move as quickly as they want. Mm-hmm. They're not held yes. back by everybody else in the class. So that's the first part of the day, which maybe is a little more individual, but still some collaboration goes on. And then the second part of the day is what we call Quest. And that's where there's more integrating everything they're learning all together. So it could be, like you mentioned, gardening. Maybe there's somebody interested in horticulture. But we also have, this is part of what I think makes the guide different than the teacher. They can set up optional project ideas or we call we would call them launches to for the young learners to be able to pick and choose their project to to work on and focus on throughout the the year or the the six-week session i think the key differences if i'm understanding everything correctly is traditional school you're in the classroom from 7 30 to 2 30 you go with your same age group you do the same things there's a path that you follow throughout the year you get tested on it and here it's learner driven it's passion driven They're self-learning. They're self-governing. There is a lot of peer-to-peer stuff. Here's another key difference that I feel like we should mention. The guides are not allowed to give answers. What is a guide allowed to do? 
Good question. Really, it comes back to the Socratic method. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed to essentially give a declarative statement in response to a question a young learner might ask. They are allowed, though, if somebody or one of the heroes comes up and says, oh, I don't know what I want to do today. What should I do today? A guide might say, what do you think would be a good thing for you to do with your time today? And they'd say, I don't know. And the guy would say, let's think of some options. What did you do yesterday? How did that work out? And what could be what would be something you could do today? And that's, a, a I think, a maybe silly example, but they're guiding rather than saying, do your math. They are not giving you the answer. They're returning your question with another question to make you figure out what you want to do. That is the Socratic method that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I will take a moment here. Let's just touch on the Socratic discussions. I want to go ahead and get that out of the way before we move forward. So anyone yeah. who's confused about Socratic teaching methods, it refers to Socrates, who that was his way of teaching. He would ask questions and then more difficult questions until people came up with their own answers. That's mm -hmm. the Socratic method. And that's what you're employing at Acton Academy. And I love that. And the reasoning and the root of that is because we want to push power back to these young learners, to the kids. We want to empower them for their own education. And asking a guide or an authority figure a specific question and getting a nonspecific question in return leads them to seek different avenues of finding answers to their mm -hmm. questions. And really, it helps them to understand that what we believe is learning to ask the right questions is far more important than being able to regurgitate correct answers. We're going to go ahead and start diving in a little deeper. Before we do, who were the original Acton Academy founders and how long has this academy been in place? When did they get started with this academy? So Jeff and Laura Sandifer, they are from Austin, Texas, and they opened up the first Acton Academy back in 2009. 2009. Do you know what prompted them to start it? Yes. I love that story. Tell me. It's in the book and I'm sure if anyone does any research, they'll happen upon mm -hmm. it. But Let's um, just mention the book here too so people can look it up. It's called oh. Courage to Grow and Nick and Jessica were nice enough to bring me a copy today. So thank you very much. But go ahead and look at Courage to Grow when you get a chance. Go ahead and give us the nutshell version. Yeah, sure. So Courage to Grow was written by... Laura Sandifer. And I guess the nutshell version is that they had their two young boys in a non-traditional preschool, a Montessori school, and they went to their, I guess, the head teacher at their private school where they were planning to send their boys mm -hmm. and sat down and visited with them and said, hey, at what point do you think we should transition our boys to, to this school? And they said, well, as soon as possible. And he said, oh, that's interesting. Why? And he said, after they've had all that freedom, they're not going to want to sit chained to a desk all day and, and have somebody talk at them for eight hours. And Jeff Sandifer looked at that head teacher and said, I can't blame him. Kind of almost just snapped back. And that then that head teacher looked down for the longest time. In Jeff's recounting of the story, he says he thought he offended him. But then that teacher looked up with tears in his eyes and just said, I can't blame him. I wouldn't want to be talked at for eight hours a day either. Yeah. So at that point, I think it was their moment of I'm done. We're going to we're doing something else. We're going to homeschool. We're going to open a school. I, I don't know what it is, but we're going to do something else. And from that, they did end up starting Acton Academy. Now yeah. there's over 300 around the world. World, yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. 300 Acton Academy affiliates around the world. Are they measurable advantages to having your kids go through a program like this? What benefits have you seen or what successes can you mention here that yeah. th these schools have seen with their students? I think to me, uh, one of the most telling um I guess it's still anecdotal in this sense, but it's very broadly been proven as well. But one of the most common pieces of feedback that they'll get from individuals that have gone to Acton Academy and gone on to get jobs is that they are teachable. They are willing to learn and accept feedback and ask questions. So they're teachable. I think that's, to me, a great indicator of some of the success of Acton Academy. Probably what a lot of people would be looking for uh, would be an answer. Like, I know that the studies and data have shown that on average, an Acton Academy learner will progress two and a half grade levels in the span of nine months. Oh, wow. And so that's significant. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's yeah, on average. On <laughs> average. And that's I think it's a side note. It's not the goal, but it's a, a telling point as well that when we allow these individuals to make choices for themselves and choose what they're going to do, 
do something they're passionate about and really engage, the, the progress increases. You mentioned the hero's journey. And when we were talking about it earlier, it's it, the kids are on a hero's journey. The guides are on a hero journey. But yeah. even the parents are also on a hero's journey. Yeah, so, talk so to are me, we. Yeah. Talk, talk to me a little bit about what that is. It's a new concept here. So tell me about the hero's journey. And it's new in the sense that we don't associate it with school mm -hmm. typically, but it is as old as time. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Joseph Campbell did a lot of work that focused on the hero's journey or just a, the monomyth of think about your Frodo Baggins or your Luke Skywalker. It's an ordinary person gets this call to adventure and mm -hmm. they answer the call, they have a decision. Often there's a mentor that helps get them to make this choice to accept that call. And then they set out on this journey for discovering true treasure. Mm -hmm. And the treasure often ends up being within them. And along the way, they're fighting monsters, monsters in the, in our sense. And it act and often are distraction, victimhood yes. or resistance might be one as well. And so this hero is setting out, they're setting out to change the world. They're setting out to do something. And it's often a service based for other people. And they return with this treasure to share. Like we said, along the way, like a lot of the learning that takes place is that asking those right questions mm -hmm. is much more important. So I think a little bit about my dad. He was an educator and taught in public schools, my mom also, and I'm a product of public schools. And But one of the things that I think my dad did really was, and often frustratingly, was to no. return our questions with more questions and invite us to find the answers ourselves. And well, yeah, and yeah. so I think that along with the hero's journey is mm -hmm. really important. You are opening an affiliate Acton school here this fall. It's called Acton Academy Topsail. The age group for this first year is... Yeah, it's going to be ages 6 through 12. Okay. And mm -hmm. how many students do you expect to have this first year? I think we want to start small and do it the right way and get mm -hmm. a good tribe and community built. So our goal is 10 to 15 students the first year. Is that about average for Acton schools, do you think? I think so. And the first Acton started with seven was what they had. And so... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. And, yeah so it's not, not huge. And that was just very organic growth from there. They started in just a repurposed home in Austin, mm -hmm. Texas. The traditional classrooms, they're separated by ages and grade levels and often even different wings of the school. This is not it. This is a studio. Everyone's in the same room together. I can see how that's beneficial for the younger students. You've got the younger ones who are asking the questions to the older kids. But like my son is 12. So he would be at the top of your age range that you're starting off with. I'm worried about him being challenged in the classroom. How is it going to challenge my 12 year old when he's maybe the only 12 year old in the whole classroom? I think that's a great concern. The great and beautiful thing about the Acton model is that it is learner driven. These 12 year olds can still learn at their own pace. They can set their own goals and challenges and can reach them as quickly as they put their mind to. And it also gives these 12 year olds a great tool of learning to be a leader in the mm -hmm. classroom as they are mentors for the younger students and help make sure that the balances and checks are all in order. They learn a great invaluable skill about being a leader that they might not get in the traditional classroom. That is important. You're right. If he's doing his own self-learning mm -hmm. prior to the project-based stuff that they're going to be doing together, then he would already be doing his own thing over here and learning and progressing and then still get the leadership experience as well. Exactly. Love that. I think just one other thing about having mixed age group is just that it, anybody who's tried to teach something to someone else, I think has seen the benefit of you learn yourself much more as you try and impart some understanding to somebody else. And so going both ways, both for those who are younger, those who are older, there's all, all sorts of benefits and just learning to work with different age levels and different groups. Does Acton follow a traditional school year or is it year round? We'll start with our first year on September 3rd and we'll generally follow the Pender County calendar. Okay. And how long are the school days? They're a pretty typical school day. We plan to start at eight and end by three, Monday through Friday. And you said your parents were, both of them were school teachers in the public school system and you're a product of the public school system as, as I, I am. I yeah. am as well. You yes. were. Yeah. Okay. 
And have any of your kids attended an Acton school at this point? No, no. not yet. And to be 100% honest, that's a big part of why we're starting an Acton Academy, because we want our kids to be able mm-hmm. to go there. And we have four. How old are your kids and what grades are they going to be in? So we have four kids. We have a 13-year-old. She'll go into eighth grade, 12-year-old who will start this fall at Acton Academy, otherwise would go into sixth, sixth grade. grade. And then we have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old who will both join. We talked about the Courage to Grow book. Who gave you that book? How did you get turned? on to that book and this academy. So Nick, for years, probably over 10 years, has just really felt like he has wanted and honestly felt called to start a school. He came home and just, I feel like I need to start a school. And for a long time, years, we didn't really know what that would look like. We'd talk about it, but nothing really fell into place. Five years ago, we were living in St. George, Utah, where we just moved from. And on Facebook, I was scrolling one day and came across an ad for an Acton Academy offering the Courage to Grow book. So I requested the book, got it in the mail and gave it to Nick and said, I think you should read this. This seems like something I think you would like. Yeah. And I did. (laughs) You mentioned that you are from Utah. So what <laughs> brought you to this area specifically? We were just, I always tell people, just chasing a dream. We wanted to live on the coast. Of Similar to the school thing, I'd say to Jess, let's try North Carolina. It sounds so oh, nice. Really? Like, we nice had pe- never been here, sounds, never yeah. visited. Really? No. Not, no family, like nothing really was jumping out at us about North Carolina, but... Other than, yeah, just a poll, an mm-hmm. inexplicable poll. Had you, did you come out to visit North Carolina before you made the move? Did you come just test the waters a little bit? We did. We yeah. did, but it was like after we had made up our mind we were moving. It mm-hmm. was like, we're going to move, but we better check it out just yeah. to be sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you target Topsail area right off the bat or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. we did. We we looked at we looked at Wilmington and yeah. our gaze shifted mm-hmm. north as well. as many of yeah. us did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But when did you move here? We arrived in April of 2023, so we've been here for just a little over a year. We love it. We love the beach. Nick is living his dream because he gets to surf every day. Oh, nice! We met in Hawaii in in the ocean of all places, <laughs> and and so I did a little bit there, but um, relearning. Uh, here. So it's been fun. Well, where did y'all grow up? Where were you born and raised? I grew up in Utah. And I'm from Wyoming. So we we had to cross the ocean and go to Hawaii before we actually (laughs) met each other. But we just love the ocean. We love the beach. We love the water. As mentioned earlier, Acton uses the term guides instead of teachers. And will the two of you be guides? I will continue working external to our Acton Academy topsoil. But Jess will start out we, we're very selective, and I think understandably so, about who will be a guide and a guide that is on a hero's journey themselves. Jess is going to be the first guide as we continue to look for an assistant guide and then move on from there. How many guides will you have in the classroom? Let's say you have 15 students to start out with this year. How many guides will you have in there for the duration of the school year? We will have two guides. I think we could have one guide, really, but unless they get sick, we would need another guide, a backup. So an assistant guide, just one that knows the kids and what they're going through every day that can be there when the other one can't. Because this is a new concept and they're not allowed to just answer the questions or give them too much instruction, they have to answer the question with another question. I assume there's going to be some training involved with your guides. Where are they going to get this training? They'll be vetted through a process similar to what we went through as we auditioned to become an Acton Academy affiliate. You two auditioned with the original founders? Uh Yeah. Was that difficult? Was, yeah. We had to. Was it really? (laughs) We had to make a video of ourselves (laughs) and submit it and answer questions. Oh, so you weren't in person with them. This was done online. We were able to do it virtually. Yeah. How do you go about training the guides? Yes. The guides will be trained. First of all, they'll go through an audition process similar to the one we went through as we auditioned to, to be become an Acton affiliate. And they will also, because we're part of the Acton Academy network, they mm-hmm. have access to training tools. And the, the, I think the software is called My Journey Tracker that they'll use, but they will do challenges and learn the Socratic method that way and through interaction with with us and with other guides in the network. I'm assuming then that the guides don't have to have teaching degrees. Correct. Because I'm a helicopter mom. As many of us are. <laughs> Will there be background checks of these guides? Uh, yeah. I, okay. I yeah. just had to ask. That's, That's a good question that I'm sure lots of parents wonder about. <laughs> Let's talk about the learning tools. You mentioned the electronic devices and where they're using Khan Academy, which we do have experience with Khan Academy at North Topsville Elementary, mm-hmm. which is where my kids went. So I know a little bit about that and how they progress through those levels. 
materials. What other materials? Are there workbooks? Uh, what about supplies? And do you issue electronic devices or are we going to bring our own from home? What about science supplies? And what about art and music and all of those things? What are you going to have there for them to get them excited about learning? So learners will engage with mastery-based software to develop their core skills in math, science, reading, writing. And that way students can progress at their own pace. They get badges or maybe points as they master each skill. And the use of gamification helps keep these kids excited and motivated to learn. And we also combine a Montessori blended approach and then, of course, project-based learning that we talked about in a cohesive model to, to provide a rich entrepreneurial environment for students. And so it's experiential, it's hands-on, it's fun. In other words, learning is meant to be fun. The gamification is going to appeal to my boys yeah. <laughs> anyway. And in the video that I watched, I did, they had the entrepreneurial, it was like a fair where they created their own products and they had this fair where they set up their booths. Yes, it's called the Children's Business Fair. Yeah, the Acton Foundation will facilitate really anyone that wants to set up a children's business fair in their area. And mm -hmm. we did a children's business fair. I actually listened to the podcast that you had with the Shaka Taco mm -hmm. founders. And so our business fair was at Shaka Taco in Hempstead. Yeah. That last May. <laughs> I was thinking of that business fair because I saw that and I didn't know about it ahead of time. I saw yeah. it too late. That would have been so fun to go to. And the video reminded me very much of that. So y'all were at that? Or that was that was us. We yeah. hosted that. We it put was, that yeah. on for the community and we're excited to do it. Cool. It was a yeah. success and the kids loved it and learned a lot from it. So we plan to continue to do that. I hope so. We should say too that we're not promising any kind of like you know, a panacea or utopia. A, it's, it's, we're learning as well. Everybody's learning along the way and I'm sure we'll make mistakes, but I think we are dedicated to, first of all, that belief that every child is a genius mm -hmm. and we want to empower them and give the power back to these young learners so mm -hmm. that they can find their own calling. And, yeah, I love again, it. My boys would be so mad if I don't ask you, are you going to send them home with homework? Because that is just <laughs> the bane of my 12 year old's existence. We believe that family is in charge of their time after school. So we will not assign homework. We have heard from other Actons that lots of times children will bring their work home to work on it because they are engaged, they are mm -hmm. having fun, and they enjoy the learning process. So they will continue to work on their projects at home, but we will not send worksheets, workbooks. He'll be thrilled. Them. Will they receive any outdoor activities or like a recess? Because that's my nine-year-old's mm -hmm. favorite subject. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. <Yeah. laughs> what, what are you going to have for them as far as outdoor physical activities? The typical makeup of each day is there's uh, an hour break for lunch in the middle and slash recess, free time to, to do what they like. But a lot of learning will lead these young learners outside anyway. Okay. And, and I mean, if, if it's a nice day and somebody wants to go read on the porch or out in the, the yard, mm -hmm. there's no reason why they wouldn't be okay. able to to go outside. A lot can be learned from a game of kickball and just lots of play and exercise. There's a lot to be learned. And mm -hmm. so we plan to incorporate that into every day. It's really hard for me to turn off one paradigm in my head and adopt another one. And even with myself growing up, grades were so important to me. And so where's the testing? Like I got to know, like how do Acton students get tested the same way they get tested in a regular school? I think North Carolina requires some testing, it, right? Yeah. And then how do you know that they've mastered a skill and can now move forward without that testing in place? I, as a parent, also would love to know what is my child doing at school and what are they accomplishing and how can yeah. I know if they are mastering this? The mastery-based software can show you how much they are right. mastering along as they go. And additionally, we would have public exhibitions where parents can come in and the children will show off their work. They'll mm -hmm. show them their projects that they've been working on. And it's a great way for parents parents to see all the work that they're doing at Acton. Yeah. I, the first thought that comes to my mind is you mentioned mindset and Carol Dweck did a lot of research and wrote a book called Mindset, but we're big on growth mindset. The idea of praising effort and progress and not necessarily just the result. We won't issue ABC grades. Like we said, there are badges, there are points. There's a system of incentive and motivation that, mm -hmm. that's in place, but it's not, it's not an authoritative figure that is assigning any kind of a grade or judgment on their work. Some kids are like, I'm not going to get graded. This is awesome. Yeah. I don't have to work that hard here. Yeah. So how do you combat someone who's like, I don't have to worry about bringing home a D or C or F. 
How do you get them to be motivated to work hard in the classroom? I think the key there is finding the right incentive. Everyone will work if you find out what they want to work for. Yeah, as a guide, you just put in place the right incentives. Can you give me an example? Fun Friday, we're going to go to the beach on Friday. And if you have this badge passed off, you get to join us. We might even also have a snow cone while we're there. And if they have that badge passed off, they're probably going to work for that so that they can join their friends at the okay. beach Friday. But if they decided to skip their work all week, mm -hmm. didn't get the badge, they're going to be stuck in the building on Friday working on that instead. Let's say that it doesn't work out for whatever reason. I pull my kid out of public schools. I send them to Acton. We give it a year, maybe two. And we're like, this is just not for my kid. It's not working out. I guess, first of all, when you see a kid struggling in that environment, what do you have in place to nurture that kid through the remainder of the school year? What do you do when a kid is really struggling in that environment? And do you, you mean struggling? I could see my nine-year-old. He loves structure. Okay. He wants to know what he's facing for the day. My 12-year-old is probably going to love this environment a whole lot because he doesn't like the structure. Yeah. He wants to go in and determine his own path. Nothing would suit him better than that environment. My, my nine-year-old is much different. So he may like, n I don't know what to do with the chaos. I would imagine that some kids don't do well in that environment for any number of reasons. But right. what do you do when you see a kid who's like in the corner, just not participating? I don't know what to do here. I can't find my passion. I'm frustrated. How do you deal with that? I would say, first and foremost, one of the things that we tell people as we're describing Acton Academy is that our ideal day looks like no adult interaction. If the adult didn't even enter the room, it would be a beautiful thing and nothing would change. And these young learners would continue and go about and things would work out smoothly. And if that's a scary thing to some people, we understand and we get it and that's okay. It may not be the right place. And so I mm -hmm. think just understanding that at the outset. That's what our hope and goal is. So that, first of all. Second, though, I think, especially when you mentioned somebody like your son who appreciates some structure, I think the beautiful thing is that he can learn to create his own structure and provide that for himself. Oh, that's a good answer, Nick. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> but it's so true. He that is the whole point of that. acting is yeah. they create the answer to whatever they need. That was That is exactly what I needed to hear. Oh. No, he, he does need to learn how to create his own structure. Yeah. You're 100% right. It's a beautiful and amazing thought, and we will do everything we can to put it in place. Me, as a parent, it is so hard. It's hard to watch them struggle. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that we're overcoming and working on. But yeah, I think, again, just trying to give the power back to these young learners. With the other affiliate schools, has there ever been in an instance where the student returned to public schools? And if so, did they test that kid to see, like, are you up with us now? Did you cover the same curriculum? Now we've got to test you. We might hold you back for a year. That's another yeah. one of my feelings years that I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around. What happens if it doesn't work out? Yeah. And we have to go back into the public school system. Is it going to be behind? State law does require that we do testing, like the, the state mandated mm -hmm. standardized test. And so we will do that as just a, a normal part of the day. We'll hand it out and move on. We'll do that because it's required. So I guess schools will have that piece of information if somebody ever did have to go back to the school. There have certainly been instances where a young learner didn't fit or didn't find what they were hoping to find at mm -hmm. Acton and went back. But each situation is so different. I and guess that leads to the next question, then are Acton schools accredited? And if so, by whom? We're accredited by the International Association for Learner-Driven Schools. And there is a society of micro schools that we're also a part of. But so, yes, we are accredited. If it didn't work out and we went back into the public schools, this would help us with regard to getting them back into the school system at the proper grade level. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This feels, in some ways, there's some similarities to homeschooling. And here in Hampstead, we have a very large homeschooling population. I love that. Outside of the obvious, you have an, an away from home location. What would you say are the benefits to attending Acton over homeschooling? Good question. I think what draws a lot of people to choose homeschooling is just the freedom. Mm -hmm. And Acton Academy also offers a lot of freedom. Our goal, though, is to build a community 
of lifelong learners. And as children come and interact with you, with each other and set goals and play together, they are building a community. Yeah, it really emphasizes collaboration, real challenges, and it holds them to a high standard of character. We've explored homeschool and we have to honor those who are willing and able to make that kind of a change and take that challenge on. But I think there is so much to be said for humans bumping into each other and trying to figure out how to work together in a setting that's that's outside the home yeah. as well. Yeah. Does Acton offer special needs programs? So we're not trained to serve children with serious learning disabilities, but we have been able to serve, we as the network has been able to serve young heroes with dyslexia if they receive special training. And I think too, it's important to point out that we believe that often some minor learning disabilities are potentially misdiagnosed. And so we're not in the business of labeling people. We'll take a look at the fit of the family and see how things go. But we don't have training for those with particular special needs. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't want to label things, you're not going to like my next question. (laughs) They have the AIG classes in the Mm -hmm. traditional schools. How do you feel that academically gifted children, how they would do in the Acton environment? We honestly really do believe that every single young person is gifted. So they can progress in any subject to any level. And a gifted individual has the power and ability and the tools to be able to excel far beyond what they may otherwise be able to find, and whether it's in public school or elsewhere, because Mm -hmm. the sky's the limit. It's what do they know and what can they understand? And so they can keep going. Sometimes kids in the classroom may not have grasped the full concept, but because the rest of the class is moving on, they have to move on with the rest of the class. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could speak to that. So no no kids getting pushed forward. My own personal experience, I studied at, it's called ESADE. It's a business school in Spain. But even in a master's degree program, I felt just a huge pressure for me, myself, to just fit, it, fit in, even with this small cohort of about 10 other individuals. I did not understand this ANCOVA statistical method very well, but I didn't feel like I could say, I don't get it because we're in a master's program and we're supposed to get it. And so I kept on going and had to then go back and just a huge mess to try and figure things out later Mm -hmm. on. But I get that 100%. And I think that type of pressure and just expectation is eliminated at Acton Academy. I think too, if a child is experiencing that, and they get a bad grade, that's very discouraging. Then you just want to like, I I must not be a great student. I'm just going to give up. And then acting up in class just because they're hurt. And so I felt it helps both the full range of kids, whether you're academically gifted in the traditional sense, Mm -hmm. or you're being forced to move along at a pace that you can't keep up with and get super discouraged. I feel like the Acton Academy method is going to serve a broad range of kids who are dealing with different problems, whether you're at this end or that end the learning spectrum. Absolutely. And one thing that I did want to be sure and point out was just that it just brings us back to that focus of encouraging young learners to participate in their hero's journey Mm -hmm. and find a calling that that will change the world in a profound way. And so if that means for a particular young hero that developing a math equation that allows them to travel through a black hole, we would be delighted and support them in that. And and Mm -hmm. that would be an amazing and great calling. How involved are the parents in your school? Uh, Jessica, you did mention that you will have events where we come and see their projects. Yeah, public exhibitions. Public exhibitions. Mm -hmm. How else would we get involved? Right. I think when a learner joins Acton, you become an Acton family parents agree to also be on their own hero's journey. They will also sign a contract to adhere to the standard of Acton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... That that's one of the difficult things for parents and us as well, is to essentially respect that young learner's experience and respect their studio and the studio space as sacred. Parents are encouraged to read their hero's badge plan and support them in their goals. But we actually ask that parents don't email guides or owners without first having asked permission from their child to do that. And we're not going to have a meeting about a child without that child sitting there because we don't want to come between you and your child. That's between you and your child. We're trying to respect 
respect the learning experience of the child and push the power back to the young people. There are journey meetings where parents are invited to to sit with their young learners present. And like she mentioned, learning exhibitions where parents and community members are invited to come and see what mm-hmm. these young learners have been working on. But I, I do want to say yeah. that we would love like parent involvement. If there is something a parent is good at or passionate about, whether that be like Nick surfing, then we would love for them to come take the kids surfing and in- introduce them to all sorts of oh, different yeah. things. Uh-huh. We would love yeah. parents to be involved in that aspect. Okay. We're parents not closing often, doors. No. Yeah. But we do want there to be a clear boundary between where we're willing to step in and not. We don't want to we don't want to step in and fix problems for parents or children. Mm-hmm. The idea is that they'll learn to do I'm, it I'm not going to lie. It's a, that's another paradigm shift. Yeah, oh, for sure. It's hard. You know? It is hard to, yes, to see your child struggle and not want to solve the problem for them. Or just give them so much freedom. Yeah. Yeah. That age. I'm not used to that. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) So let's talk about the pricing. This is a private school. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is the planned annual tuition? For year one, the tuition will be 9200 with a $500 registration fee. And are there any cost in addition to that registration fee and the annual tuition that parents would need to know about, like buying supplies and surfing lessons or <laughs> snow cones? Is there anything else we should expect throughout the year? No, we don't plan to have any other fees. We'll provide like Chromebooks, for example. Oh, y'all um, do provide the Chromebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, no, nope, those are the only costs associated with it. Okay. So 9200 the first year, you feel like that may change as time goes by or just an adjustment like every private school does? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. I can't predict inflation, unfortunately. I wish you could. You mentioned this to me, and so I did a little bit of research to figure it out because I wasn't completely clear on it. North Carolina did just pass that universal school choice bill last year. I would say that you could go and apply for mm-hmm. that, but there's a very short window. February 1st to March 1st, that's the window you get to apply for mm-hmm. the next school year. That's that's gone, but you could on February 1st go apply for the 25-26 school year right. and use that money from that bill. But I would also like to say, too, that that is still based on a annual income. It's a sliding scale about how much you would be awarded in that scholarship program. But are there any other scholarships or financial aid opportunities that you could tell us about? Yes, we will definitely have some scholarship opportunities. If it was up to me, this would be free. I believe that every child really should have this as an option. It is amazing. And this is one of the biggest questions Nick and I have gone back and forth on what should the tuition be. But unfortunately, we do have to pay for building and guides and lots of different things. So there has to be some kind of there has to be some kind of tuition. Yeah, it's completely understandable. I get why you have to do that. Right. But again, when you're used to going to public schools, Mm -hmm. and now you've got to figure out a way to afford a private school, it's something that we all have to think about and consider. So I just wanted to put those questions out there for you so that the listeners can be aware. Yeah. And I think, too, it's worth noting that as we grow, we our plan is to be able to provide scholarships. And if somebody's got a creative idea, we're open to it. We're not trying to exclude anybody for any particular reason. This is just where of we're at course. right now. Of course, yeah. So let's talk about your future plans. Where do you see Acton Academy Topsoil in five years? Great. Yeah, we're we're starting now with an elementary school studio, and then we'll add a a spark or preschool and then middle school after that as soon as possible, followed by launch pad, which is our term for high school. So in five years, (laughs) we plan to be able to facilitate up through uh, launch pad high school and even sometime in the future, open up additional campuses to where... Neighboring cities. Is that Mm -hmm. what you mean? Uh Uh Yeah. And even... Just depending on demand, we could have, I don't there's know. There's a how handful m- in Austin. There's, yeah, there's five. Oh, really? Acton Academy okay. in Austin. And part of that is because, the, and I think, again, borrowed from Montessori, is that the ideal kind of learner to guide ratio is somewhere around 30, I mm-hmm. believe, young learners. And so we don't want to overfill. The so it must be really popular then in, in Austin if so many people are going there that they need multiple campuses, I would imagine. That's yeah. great. It's yeah. good to hear. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are yeah, lots of other campuses is popping up. You have a website, actintopsil.com. People can go there and learn a lot of information that we may not have covered here today. In particular, there's a, a frequently asked questions tab. Mm-hmm. If, if I missed any questions that you didn't get answered, certainly go there. One of the questions I noticed on there, which caught me off guard, I didn't even think to ask it, is this a religious-based school? 
Good question. So we are open to believers, searchers, and non-believers alike, as it points out in our FAQs, but we expose children to the importance of mindful spirituality and stress the historical importance of Christianity in the development of Western culture. So we're not promoting any particular religion, but we ourselves are religious and we're not hiding that either. Mm -hmm. So that's just the way we approach a religious question. It is time to wrap things up. Would you like to give out the contact information? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Phone number 385 210-7404 and the website is www.actontopsil so A-C-T-O-N-T-O-P-S-A-I-L dot com. You can email Nick at actontopsil.com You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. I will have those links. They will be in my show notes so I'll have all of your contact information listed there. Cool. I'll have your website, your Facebook and your Instagram accounts. I will have those hot and so all they have to do is click on that and go straight to your page. So if you missed any of this information, you know where to go and get all you need there. Just want to say thank you to my listeners who joined us today. We had a lot to cover and because this is so different from regular schools, I just felt like we needed to dive in on a little bit more serious note. And if I didn't ask the questions that you wanted to hear, then reach out to Nick and Jessica, call, email, check out their website. Please go look at that YouTube video. I really encourage that mm-hmm. as well. So thank you. Thank you again, Nick and Jessica. Thank you so much, Krista. Yeah, was I appreciate amazing. you guys coming in here and just being subjected to yeah. someone who's like, I don't trust. I don't no, know. So what am I going to What are you going to do with my kid? <laughs> Believe it or not, it's been fun for us. So thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you so much, both of you. Hey, if you enjoyed today's episode of Topsail Insider, please show your support by clicking the follow or subscribe button on your favorite podcast listening platform. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Please also go to topsailinsider.com and join our mailing list by clicking on the Make Me a Topsail Insider button. While you're there, you can click the send me a voicemail button and let me know exactly what you're thinking. Your message just might be on an episode of Topsail Insider. You can email me at Krista at TopsailInsider.com or call or text me at 910-800-0111. Thank you for listening and supporting Topsail Insider and our local businesses and nonprofits. These are our neighbors and our friends, and together we build a mighty and a beautiful community I'm super proud to be a part of. I'll see you around Topsail. Hey guys, it's Leah with Topsail Talk. I explore local businesses, services, people, and activities in Topsail and its surrounding areas, and I post videos about them. You can find and follow Topsail Talk on Facebook and Instagram. You'll never know where we're going to go, but if you try one of my stops, be sure to tell them Topsail Talk sent you. Angie here with Houseworks Cleaning Service. Summer's in full swing and you live near the beach. That means you'll have lots of visitors and you'll need your home cleaned. We know your time is precious, so why not give Houseworks a call at 910-547-0260 and let us get her done for you. And as always, at Houseworks Cleaning Service, your house gets the works every time. 